Slow cooker, get us beef stew. Hey, welcome back to The Average Kitchen. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make an amazing slow cooker Guinness beef stew. Amazing kind of fall, warm, hearty bowl of stew. Love it. Never used a slow cooker yet on The Average Kitchen, but we're gonna fire that up today. So you can see we have a plethora of stuff going on here. Uh, carrots from my garden. Uh, potatoes from a garden in PEI. Uh, some celery, onion, beef broth, tomato paste, garlic powder, flour, Guinness, the whole nine yards. So we're just gonna start out, I got four cups of beef broth here. I'm just gonna quickly pour that right into the slow cooker and get that slowly warmed up. So we're gonna start working on our veg here. So I'm just gonna make myself a little bit of room. So just get some celery that I'm gonna cut quite chunky. And we could already just start throwing all this into the uh, mixture here. Again, onion will cut chunky. And we'll try to make everything somewhat consistent as far as uh, the size of potato, the size of beef, so on and so forth. So everything looks pretty uniform. The potatoes I, I, I washed, I'm not gonna peel them. Um, so we're gonna get those chunked up as well. So I tend to just cut it in half, depending on the thickness here. I may go down the middle again and then just basically chunk that up. So you're looking at kind of bite-sized pieces of potato. So I just give the carrots a quick peel and I'm just gonna basically make kind of coins out of them. You know, nothing too massive. You could get a little bit fancy, I guess, and put your three together. Get those out of the road, we'll get them into slow cooker here. And while I'm standing right here, I'll add in my tomato paste. And then we'll add in, I've got uh, about a tablespoon and a half of uh, minced garlic that we're gonna throw in there as well. So I'm gonna work on the beef now. So this is a Boston roast. Now, I know some people may not love the idea of chunking up a roast, but you know what? Um, that's what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna cut the little string off of here. And there should be another. And what I'm gonna do is, after I chunk all this up, I am going to put all the chunks into a Ziploc bag and give it a quick toss in about three tablespoons of uh, white flour, some salt and pepper, and then we're gonna give it a quick pan fry. The beef has already kind of chunked a little bit here for us, so there's a little bit of fat there, which I think I'm just gonna leave, and I'm just gonna start cutting it into, we'll say above average size, bite size chunks, like that. So just finishing off cutting up the beef here, again, just into somewhat bite-sized chunks. My beef is still a little bit frozen. That's all right, it makes it a lot easier to cut. We got our beef in a bag. So what I'm gonna do is uh, gonna grind in a pretty good amount of salt, maybe like tablespoon, tablespoon and a half roughly maybe and then pepper, and then I'm gonna dump in my flour. So I'm gonna do a little bit at a time. So what you wanna do is basically leave a bunch of air in your Ziploc bag here like this, and then you're just gonna give it a bit of a shake. So if you dump in all your flour all at once, it'll probably just clump together, so you don't wanna do that. So then I'll dump in a bit more. And then again, I'll give that a shake. So now I'm gonna get a really hot pan going with some avocado oil that has a very high smoke point. And we're gonna brown all this beef and get it into our slow cooker. Okay, so pan's getting nice and hot. Uh, the flour's gonna do two things. It's gonna coat our beef, which is gonna be nice, but it's also gonna help thicken our stew a little bit. You'll have to keep an eye, especially right before you serve it. If you find that your base of your stew is a little thin, just make a slurry. Half water, half cornstarch, cold water in a small bowl, say a tablespoon of uh, cornstarch, tablespoon of cold water, give it a quick mix and slowly pour that into your mixture and see how that does in about a half an hour. If it's thick enough, you may have to do another one. But for the time being, the flour that we put on the beef is gonna help out with that. So we're just gonna basically start putting these in. And we just wanna get them all browned up. 
So you can put enough in your pan, but you don't want to overload the pan so that you can't um, mix things up or give them a stir. So you see our beef starting to brown. We don't want to cook it through, we just want to give it a quick brown. So right now, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna take these out, put them on a plate, and get the rest of the ones cooking. So the beef's all browned. I should make a note that you can use really any cut of beef that you like here. The only thing is your beef in the end, the tenderness of the beef may vary based on the cut of meat that you use. But really any type of beef uh, will do. I just happen to have a nice Boston roast in the freezer, so that's what I used. So we're gonna add all of this beautiful meat here and try not to make a mess to our slow cooker. So this is gonna be a pretty full pot as we can see here. Now as the vegetables start to cook down, obviously it's gonna make some more room. And I should add as well that this meal, this size, this amount of meat and vegetables easily could give you, I'm gonna say eight to 10 hearty bowls of Guinness stew. So perfect meal on a weekend if you're having company over, some nice fresh bread and a nice uh, bowl of Guinness stew, maybe even with a pint of Guinness. as well as this is probably going to take on medium to low in a slow cooker depending on your slow cooker we'll say six to seven hours low and slow taste during the process see how it, it tastes you may want to add salt and pepper to your, your the level of salt and pepper that you like hope you enjoyed it hit the notification bell subscribe we'll see you on the next one